is my pleasure to be here today to talk about textiles and how we can and are embracing more sustainable practices when it comes to reducing waste in the industry. Textile reuse and recycling efforts are scaling up globally, but so too are the upstream efforts in terms of getting better materials into the production cycle, thinking about the environmental aspects and impact of these materials, um, and what we're going to do to the people involved in the process of producing the materials. It is my pleasure to welcome to the stage our three panelists who are going to share their stories of innovation and change and discuss how this industry is involving in waste prevention um, and with circular economy principles in mind. Thank you so much. I would like to introduce you to Lewis Perkins, Alexis Kelty, and Mark, Mark Trutzak. Welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. There are truly some very exciting things happening in the industry, and I'm looking very much forward to the discussion. To get started, we'll be hearing from our pre presenters, and then we're going to be opening the, the floor uh, for discussion. Please send your questions to us and comments via the pigeonhole software. The website address is on your table. Uh, you can then, as we have been, watch the questions coming in on your mobile devices, um, and this will help prioritize the question. Questions, we will also be taking questions from the floor. I have a request that you please keep those questions brief so that we can ask, um, so we can let the panelists answer fully. So let's get started. Our first panelist is Lewis Perkins. Lewis was the Director of Sustainable Strategies for carpet manufacturer, the Mohawk Group. He draws on this experience now as senior vice president for the Cradle to Cradle Innovation Institute. Lewis advances the Institute's mission of scaling Cradle to Cradle product certification worldwide, including leading the Institute's fashion positive initiative, and we'll be hearing more about that now. He has been a featured speaker at the Forbes mag magazine Green Visionary Speaker Series, the White House Council for Environmental Quality, and the Grammy Awards Green Summit panel. Lewis, over to you. Thank you, Lisa. All right, am I up? I am, yeah. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here, and I think, you know, whenever we're gathered in these settings, there's so, there's so much great uh, collaboration that can happen, so I hope everybody's gonna get a chance to kind of get to talk through this today. I wanna talk a little bit about cradle to cradle in the fashion industry, and if you heard, uh, our president at the Institute, Bridget Luther, and my boss, speak earlier today, you know a good bit about Cradle to Cradle, or at least you know the beginning of what our institute is about. Um, we're really focusing now on looking at the institute's work through different sectors, with about 60% of the current products that have gone through certification have been part of the built environment. And so that other 40% is really the space that is more of the consumer-facing front, and that's personal care products, cleaning products, diapers, and textiles and apparel. So we started looking at the textile industry and particularly looking at how we as an institute had already been uh, working with our assessors on projects that were uh, working in commercial textiles. And so this fashion initiative that we're focusing on is really born out of the work that has already existed with the question that we wanted to answer, can we take the innovation that has been achieved in textiles in the carpet industry, which you heard a little bit about with Interface and other companies, and also textiles within commercial usage, and can we take that innovation into the fashion industry? So. Just to kind of give you the, the overview, you probably heard from Bridget how we came out of the work of William McDonough and Michael Bromgart in the standard that they were applying to the work of their clients. So our institute was launched in 2010, focusing on about 180 to 200 companies that have been certifying products and really scaling that. So the Fashion Positive Initiative is new because it's something that we wanted to take that leadership position and learnings from, the, from our legacy founders and, and assessors and carry that innovation out throughout various uh, assessors that we've trained. We now have about 19 organizations globally that are working on cradle-to-cradle -cradle certifications. So again, just to remind you, since it's been a while since this morning, our design principles that we wanted to take into textiles look at three major components. One, 
to eliminate the concept of waste? Can we actually reduce the idea of the landfill for the apparel industry? Two, use renewable energy, and that's looking at really positioning ourselves where cradle to cradle innovation isn't just about the design of the product and its future, future use, but it's really also about the production and the way we produce and scaling not just towards a circular economy of materials, but also scaling towards a renewable energy economy of production. And the last point is to celebrate diversity. And that means a number of things when you, when you look through the cradle to cradle lens. In our case, it was looking at the diversity of materials, looking at the diversity of production, regions within the map, understanding ecosystems in different areas. And so really applying a more broad approach of diversity to the fashion industry. As you heard earlier, I'm sure cradle to cradle is a continuous improvement model. So we thought if we're gonna enter into this mode, wouldn't it be great if we actually started at one of the higher levels of product certification? Okay. So within this work, we're actually wanting to prove, the proof of concept is that we can actually create materials for the apparel and, and textile and, and fashion industry that are actually at the gold level of cradle to cradle. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So everything then needs to be looked at through this lens that we talk about of biological nutrient systems or technical nutrient systems. And what's interesting about textiles is, as many of you may know, working in this space, you can look at biological materials as also a technical nutrient, meaning that it can have continuous lives. Um, optimizing a product to go into the biological nutrient system for apparel may not be the best long-term view. I mean, a planet where we're growing a lot of cotton products only to compost them may not be the best long-term vision. So how we get those materials back and not just downcycle them into carpet pad or into wall insulation, but actually start to upcycle into future yarns that can go into apparel and other products. So we look at the biological system as now contributing to this continuous flow. And we do the same thing, of course, with the technical nutrient system. Oh, I see. The technical nutrient system, uh, which also looks at nylons, polyesters, uh, and different types of uh, rayon, viscose, et cetera, and materials that we would use um, within a continuous flow of materials. But in order to do that, we also have to look at the chemistry, and we have to understand what's in the product. And cradle-to-cradle -cradle certification does that, looking at uh, products down to the parts per million. So. Our work then was to say, let's look at how the fashion industry in particular operates differently than a lot of the legacy companies we've been working with. So if you think of shampoo and you think of Aveda or you think of cleaning products and you think of Method or even furniture with Herman Miller or a carpet with Shaw, a lot of these products are made and they may not change formulation or they may not change their product ingredients for a number of seasons or years. With fashion, it's a completely different story. So for me to go into a company like LVMH or Caring or VF Core and talk to some of their brands about, hey, we really want to innovate and we want you to certify all these products continuously throughout the year. And at that level, you might be able to convince them because particularly for some of the luxury brands, but what about this concept of fast fashion where we've moved from this model of maybe four seasons, maybe five with resort, to 40, 80 seasons a year where there's weekly product coming into some of these stores. So the idea then is do you shut down fast fashion? Do you completely shut them down? Because I, I don't know that I can do that. But what I can probably do is get inside of the company and help them innovate the materials in a way and create systems in a way that this product is coming back. So we start with assessing what their current state is particularly understanding who their suppliers are. And this is something that our assessors do. This is the, the consulting work and the guidance that our assessors do. And then the next phase of the project is really to help create that benchmark of what you're currently doing and what it would take to get your products to the cradle to cradle gold level, looking at renewable energy, looking at water stewardship and social fairness at the manufacturing level, but also looking at the chemistry, the material health, and also at the design for material reutilization at the materials level. So, this project seeks then and, and is already working to connect in with supply chain partners where we can start with preferred vendors with threads, fibers, yarns, te textile fabrics, but also trims, dyes, processing chemicals, so that we actually look at all of the building blocks that would go into a collection and begin to optimize them. 
We've actually created a fund, a revolving fund that gives grants and loans out to the supply chain to, and actually to, to enable them to do this innovation work because the brand doesn't want to pay for the innovation. They don't own the supply chain and the supplier can't meet the needs of the brand unless they know they're going to have this you know, purchase order for this material. So we've come in with the, with the middle uh, with investors who are interested in seeing this optimization happen. And then the last piece of it is that we certify these materials to reach cradle to cradle gold. And then at the end, uh, we certify the collection as well. And the idea is that it's also able to make our work more scalable, to, to take this design methodology and make it scalable in an industry that moves so rapidly. Because if we can actually create the, the libraries of preferred materials, and it's not just, is flax good, is bamboo good, is bamboo rayon good, it's this bamboo rayon supplier, and it's this flax grower, you know, so we're actually looking at applying the social and the, and the water and energy components of our standard to a particular supplier. So we create not only the preferred list of materials, but what comes along with that is actually a preferred list of suppliers. I'm coming down to the last part of this. So, uh, so in, in summary, just to kind of give you an idea of what this initiative is, we're calling it fashion positive because if you've been looking out at the landscape of what's happening in the, in the whole sustainable fashion movement, there's a lot of lists you don't want to get on. And we applaud the organizations that are creating the lists that call out the organizations for using toxic chemicals or that have the most waste or that you know, reprimand fast fashion for producing so much cheaply made material that may end up in landfill. We think it's great because then we can stand on the other side and say, but let us help you because we can help you solve this problem. So these are innovation projects. In our first phase of leadership, we have six brands and designers that we're going to be announcing in November. We're in the process of sort of signing all the, the scope of work and MOUs and making sure everybody's legal is, is okay. But we'll be announcing six brands and they're from the high luxury level down to the major, you know, uh, sort of production level of uh, department stores and private label. And these, these initial projects will then be leaders within this work to prove that Cradle to Cradle certification, but, but it's not just the certification, because that's kind of the way you third party validate the work's been done. It's really about a taking this methodology into the supply chain, aligning with their industry goals. And on the last slide, I'll show you some of the organizations we partnered with, because we don't want this to stand out from what companies are already doing. Because if we ask them, hey, we want you to jump over here and do this new initiative that's counter to your goals, obviously it won't, it won't work. So we're looking to partner and align with organizations like the Sustainable Apparel Coalition, which, which we've done to make sure that we're working with their HIG index and some other standards that are out there as well. And then the end result will be creating the trusted library of materials. And these companies will be creating these libraries for themselves, but also agreeing to make them public so that it becomes an industry tool that we can start to look at these preferred materials for circular economy design. And finally, to verify the positive impact, we're going to be uh, applying our impact study, which looks at a framework of the, water, of the uh, five areas of credit credit certification and what the financial as well as social and environmental impact of this work is. Um, I think I'm going to skip past this, but I want to show you the last slide. This is mainly some of the points that you heard from Bridget earlier today. So standard harmonization we think is important, and it's, and it's important that we do this not only in, in the built environment, which is where our legacy exists, but as we look within the apparel industry, as I said, we're, we're, we're organizing ourselves around other standards that exist so we can show how we help each other and we assist each other. Uh, and these are some examples of those. Thank you. Thank you.